Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you a metal grinding and finishing system that is absolutely going to save you time in your shop. Check it out. So what I've got here is called the Combi Click System from Fair Abrasive. So these might look like uh, kind of fiber pads that maybe you've seen on other grinders, but what they have here is a backing pad that they click into. Now, what this system is really good for is kind of going through the steps when you're working on a seam that needs to either be ground down to a universal finish or it needs to be polished. Now, there's a, a kit you can buy like this one, which has an assortment, but you can get them in a variety of different grits and styles. So we've got kind of heavy grinding, lighter grinding, some surface conditioning, uh, all the way up to polishing. So instead of kind of running through all these discs and telling you what they do, I'm going to show you on a couple of examples with some mild steel and some stainless and show you what the different backing pads can do and how these might be useful in your shop, especially if you're making furniture or any finished pieces. So let's get into that. Okay, so right here I've got two pieces of inch and a half square tube. It's 120 wall thickness and I've just welded this kind of T-joint. Now this is a typical kind of scenario that you'd come into if maybe you were making a piece of furniture, maybe this would be an outside corner, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the motions of grinding this joint down and making this area uniform as though I was going to give this a patina finish. So I'd bring it basically almost to a polish and I'd have to do the entire piece because I'd want a really uniform, uh, I'd want a really uniform finish across the entire piece so that the patina would grab really well. So we'll start with this corner. I'm going to rough it in with an 80 grit grinding disc. And the way, like I said, these interface with the back pad. So this little star interacts with that star. You kind of push that on. You can hold the lock on your grinder and then you give it a twist and then it locks in and this is good to go. And now as you can see, because there's no bolt in the center that raises up, you can get really, really flat with these discs and grind almost you know, parallel to the material. Faird recommends a minimum three degree angle, but that's really, really flat. So let's grind out uh, this seam right here. You might also notice that I'm working on a new table. This is a downdraft table. So basically there's some filters inside this and this is gonna be my new grinding table and it's gonna take all that metal grinding dust, pull it through some filters and keep it out of the air. Now I do have a couple little gaps in here, but just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna leave those and then you'll be able to kind of see what I missed when I'm done grinding this. So now that we've, so now that we've got this down with an 80 grit finish, all that weld surface is gone. So this is nice and flat, but we're gonna bring this up and eventually we're gonna try to polish this. So now I'm gonna go up to a 120 grit pad. And the way we're gonna do that is by just twisting this one off. So that just pops off. So now I've got 120 grit and I can go ahead and put that on. So super uniform finish. It's probably even a little hard to pick up on camera because it's so shiny but really, really nice uniform finish. Go ahead and do the other side. You can see my little gap right there, but again, really, really uniform finish. And now we'll move up. So now the next thing I wanna use here is a surface conditioning pad. Now again, it's the same interface, but I'm actually gonna switch over to a variable speed angle grinder. Now this one is corded. The grinder I was using runs at about 8,500 RPM. This one can go down a bit lower than that. So a variable speed grinder, which I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos, especially when it comes to finishing, can be really helpful. Um, like I said, this one has a cord, but there are some new ones now that run cordless. And we'll use this surface finishing disc to get some of those grind marks out and get this thing closer to polished.
So just getting one side of this done. So at this point, this thing is really, really smooth. Now it's not mirror polished, it looks polished, but it's still very much ground. There's no real uh, like kind of back to back reflection on this. You know, if you were to try to put like a mirror on it, you can kind of see the reflection of my hand, but it's it still needs to go a lot further. But you can see if you wanted just a smooth uniform finish, you could actually achieve it pretty well with one of the surface finishing discs. We're gonna keep going all the way up. So here we've got a felt wheel, put that on. And for this, you're definitely gonna want a grinder that can slow down because you're gonna want this thing to run pretty slow, but that just clips on there. And then we've got some buffing compound that comes in this little set. What I like about these fared sets is that if you're not familiar with a product like this, right? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go out and buy, you know, 20 of each of these different size discs and figure it out. Um, it's not really practical, right? You want to learn the product. So this particular combi click set uh, over here has three of common discs and then a couple other ones and then a polishing set. So once you kind of get started with this, similar to some of the other kits that I've showed, you can then decide what you need to reorder and reorder it. So let's polish this up. So you see, you can see right away, you see the way my fingertips are reflecting in the surface. So now this is not a flawless mirror polish by any means. And the way you can kind of judge a mirror polish is how far away you need to be from it in order to get the effects of the mirror. But you can see how I'm reflecting the grinder that's over on the bench and reflecting down on the vice jaws and stuff. So super, super easy to get there um, in mild steel. Now I left this side alone because I just didn't want to catch inside that gap. But this side being that surface conditioning finish is also really nice and consistent. And then if you have to go that much further, you can go to mirror. So now this piece being mild steel, um, it's less likely that you're gonna to wanna to go with a mirror polish on anything because this mild steel, even though it's got a, a, a semi mirror polish on it, it's still gonna rust. This is stainless. Now, the idea of polished stainless um, is extremely common and it's something that you may come across or you know may be asked to do. Now, one of the things that comes up in my work a lot is I do a lot of repair and restoration work so what often comes up for me is that someone has a polished piece and wants me to repolish it. So this is just some welded one inch by 120 wall stainless. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind out these welds. We're gonna bring this up to polish and I'll show you how easy that is even on something tougher like stainless steel. So the process of getting there is gonna be the same. I'm gonna start with a heavier grit. In this case, I'm actually gonna start with a 120 grit because these welds are a lot lower and then I'm gonna bring it up with surface conditioning and then I'm gonna polish it. So now the difference that I'm gonna use on the stainless is I'm gonna use one of these uniform um, surface finishing discs. Now this one specifically is designed for stainless um, and it's a soft pad. We're gonna run it at a slow speed and this is gonna just bring our finish up to an even finer grind before we go to polish.
So one of the things I really like about this and I feel like uh, you know I take for granted is I have a bunch of bench buffers, right? So I could, a part this size, just bring over to a bench buffer. But if this was a frame for a piece of furniture, I wouldn't be able to manhandle it over to a buffer. So being able to do this with an angle grinder, especially a cordless one, allows your... Um, allows the scale of your projects to be that much larger and allows you to do some mirror polishing like this off site if you had to. All right, so similar processes for two different materials, right? And you can kind of see the difference in, in this shot, right? You've got the stainless here and you can see that it's extremely mirrored. Um, it looks really nice and I, I did do both sides. So you can see how it's picking up a lot of stuff even at a distance kind of from across my shop. Um, and then this is the mild steel, which has a, a pretty nice finish on it as well, but it, it has some, some grind lines and grit in it. And then this side um, with just a uniform finish. So, you know, obviously this is a pretty simple example of, of this system and how it works. What I really like about these discs is uh, just that there's a good variety of these. So uh, a bunch of different types of surface finishing discs in different coarseness, depending on the finish you're getting, obviously lots of grinding and sanding discs and a couple of the uh, abrasive types that Faird already makes. And one of my favorites is they also make the Victo grain in this disc. Now, one of the things that you probably noticed while I was doing this was that I was able to hold my grinder very, very flat. Now, what you get out of that is you get more use out of the disc itself, right? Because a lot of times if you're using a disc at an extreme angle, you know, you're only really using, you know, the this edge, this like, you know, 10% or 20% of the disc. But when you're able to get it nice and flat because there's no mounting point here in the center, uh, you get to use a lot more of that abrasive, which just kind of makes these go a little bit farther. So what I've got here is I've got a four and a half inch set, and then they also make these in a five inch as well if you have a larger grinder or you have to accomplish a larger area. And one of the things that kind of can add to this little arsenal is you can use different stiffness in the backer pads themselves. So I was using black this softer backing pad uh, for this entire kind of demonstration, but there's also a much stiffer one that barely has any give, um, which if you need to grind something that's a little bit harder, you could use something like this. So obviously not every project is going to warrant using a system like this, but if you have to polish, if you have to do uniform finish, and you wanna be able to quickly get between the grits, let's say you maybe only have one grinder, these things are super fast and they're not limited to you know a very specific type of only one type of aluminum oxide abrasive or something like that. You can really get a lot of different abrasives that will lock into these mandrels. They thread onto a standard grinder and you can go to town. All right, that about does it for this little video. I hope you enjoyed this. I really like the combi click system. Um, I mainly use the five inch size just because it's a little more efficient, that little bit larger of a disc. You can grind uh, just a little bit faster, but the four and a half inch is excellent as well, especially if you have a smaller grinder. Now, one of the things I got to recommend is getting a variable speed angle grinder. Now that corded Milwaukee one I have is fantastic. And I just put in an order for their new cordless variable speed one, which I'm really excited about, but doesn't matter what brand you have, just get yourself a slower grinder because it will absolutely help you, especially if you do metal finishing. Now this system is great and I love the fact that you can just get a kind of like almost a sample pack in this kit, which I'll link down below in the description. 
and that's going to allow you to like try these out without having to go and buy a whole box of discs. Um, like I mentioned, the Victogram, which are my favorite heavy grinding discs, are also available in this Hombi Click, the Twist Lock, and uh, I think you can get a lot of work out of these, especially if you do any restoration work that requires bringing things up to a uniform finish that might have already been there or if you work with stainless or aluminum. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did like this and you like these little tool tip videos, leave a comment down below and thumbs up this video. That really helps me out here. And subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this and more videos in the shop making stuff. I've got a couple of really cool projects that I'm working on. I'm fixing up the power hammer and I'm building a bunch of cool things. Um, and this, you know, everything I do revolves around kind of having the tools and the processes at hand so that I can work efficiently and make the most out of my time, get my projects done as good as possible. So follow me right here on Instagram at make everything shop. If you want to see what I'm doing here on a day-to-day -day basis, post pretty much every day and share a lot of behind the scenes onto what's going on. Um, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.